Hello friends, the journey of hunting wild boars in some areas in the US is full of challenges and dangers. Millions of wild boars are caught every year. The damage that people suffered has gradually decreased. So what challenges and dangers did American farmers face? Here is the video. If you like the content, please share it. Now, let's get to watch this whole entire video right now. The southeastern part of the United States, with states like Georgia and Alabama, is known as the home of the most powerful wild boars in this country. Not only is it a home for other giant sized wild boars, but it is also a pure place with complex terrain, including dense forests and mountain ranges turning this area into a one of the most dangerous and dramatic places to hunt wild boars in America. The unique thing about the terrain is that it creates favorable conditions for talented wild boars to hide. By scurrying through bushes and sneaking into deep caves, they become more difficult to capture and hunt. Exploring and attacking them becomes a daunting challenge, especially when faced with the depth and complexity of the terrain. In 2022, a group of hunters in Georgia paid a heavy price when confronting a herd of ferocious wild boars. Facing unexpected challenges, not only from wild boars, but also from complex terrains. Hunters can easily slip and fall, bump into falling trees, or even get lost in the forest. The story becomes realistic with this perception of danger. For every step, there's a new challenge. Along with unique terrains, wild boars in the southeast are often heavier and more aggressive than their counterparts in other regions. Their weight can reach about 661 pounds and their running speed can reach about 25 miles per hour. In 2023, a tragic event occurred in Alabama when a hunter was attacked by a wild boar. The story is a vivid picture of the harshness and danger that wild boar hunting brings. Therefore, all wild boar hunts in the southeastern United States are not simply adventurous, but also challenges that everyone who participates needs to be ready to face. Sharpening skills and providing adequate protective equipment becomes the key to minimizing risks and ensuring safety during each hunting adventure, making these experiences rich and memorable. Memories that are unforgettable in everyone's heart. The north of the United States, with states like Alaska, Montana, Idaho, is a particularly notable spot, famous for its impressive presence of wild boars. These animals are not only huge, but also known for their fierce souls creating one of the most adventurous and exciting hunting experiences in the country. Wild boars in this area stand out with their larger size compared to their counterparts in other regions. 
Their weight can reach up to 880 pounds, and their ability to move at speeds of about 31 miles per hour makes them difficult opponents in the hunting world. However, the hunt does not always go smoothly. Wild boars here can attack at any time, even when humans are armed. Extreme weather conditions also adds to the risk for those participating in this adventure. Wild boars in this area are not only scary in size, but also in ferocity. This places a high demand on those participating in the hunt. They need to be fully equipped with protective equipment, from helmets, body armors to gloves, to significantly reduce the risk of being attacked. The specific incident on January 10 further highlights the unforeseen challenges of embarking on a hunting adventure. Harsh weather conditions and the ferocity of wild boars makes hunting difficult and risky. Learning hunting skills and preparing carefully is important to keep yourself and your group safe when entering this difficult, wild world. In this context, Warning and sharing experiences are extremely important to create a community of skilled and well-informed northern wild boar hunters. Only then can lovers of this activity face natural challenges safely and with satisfaction. In the western region of the United States, where dark clouds floating in the mid-air often meets. Weather conditions can become challenging for wild boar hunters. Every rainstorm is a challenge. Every blanket of snow is a new challenge as well. So sometimes, cold is a unique enemy. Therefore, hunters need to accept facing these challenges alertly and fully prepared. First and foremost, rainstorms can turn hunting into a dangerous adventure. Raindrops hit like bullets, making the ground slippery and the risk of falling or being crushed by vegetation increases. You may face unforeseen challenges and it is more important than ever to prepare a raincoat, boots and gloves. These are not only protective items, but also powerful allies to help you overcome the challenges of rain and storms, protecting your body from the negative effects of the weather. Falling snow not only makes for a great picture, but it is also a tough layer to get through when you're chasing wild hogs. Disorientation, frost bites, and sometimes drowning are all potential risks. Therefore, hunters need to be equipped with the knowledge of orientation, survival skills, and preserving body temperature in cold environments. Warm clothes, waterproof shoes, and cold-proof sleeping bags will become indispensable items on this journey as well. Equally important, cold can become a cruel enemy of the hunter. Hypothermia is a dangerous problem that can lead to a life-threatening condition. Therefore, it is not only about wearing the right clothes, but also about keeping your body warm. Windproof jackets, warm gloves, and hoods will be effective tools to help you cope with this harsh cold weather. With every step on the mountain top or in the deep forest, safety rules becomes more important than ever. Careful preparation with adequate protective equipment and food is the key to ensuring safety on every hunting trip.
forecasting the weather before your trip, traveling carefully to avoid unnecessary risks, and always following the basic principles of hunting safety is an important step in facing challenges of this inclement weather. With preparation and readiness, hunters can overcome all difficulties, bringing back memories and complete success from fascinating adventures amidst the wild nature of the American West. If you found this video interesting, please comment number one below right now and do not forget to turn on your notifications bell. Every year in the United States, incidents are reported from farms that corpses were all over the ground overnight. According to statistics, about 2,000 cows and sheep are attacked by wolves and coyotes every year. Estimated damage is about $10 million in terms of treatment and replacement costs for livestock. When darkness falls, this is the right time for wolves and coyotes to forage. They advance to residential areas and attack farms en masse. However, they spend most of their time attacking domestic dogs. Domestic dogs are physically weaker than them, and they can call their flock together to attack domestic dogs. Around 1 or 2 a.m., this is the time when they attack the hardest. About 200 wolves and coyotes attacks occur annually. The number of domestic dogs is gradually decreasing. This is bad if not handled promptly. <coughs> there are dogs that are seriously injured after fights with them. Fortunately, the owner discovered and treated it promptly. Domestic dogs were eaten by them, and only a few body parts or traces remained in the snow. Despite this fact, but gray wolves are listed as endangered species in the Endangered Species Act ESA. This means that the U.S. government has an obligation to protect the species from extinction. In 1960, the gray wolf population was around 1,000 animals, and they have been preserved and repopulated to 6,000 animals in recent years. Dealing with them is no longer an important issue. The help control wild angulate populations from 1973 to present. A proclamation issued by the United States government declared gray wolves to be endangered species and prohibited all forms of hunting, capturing, or harming this species. To control coyote populations that attacks the livestock, control is first needed in areas with large coyote densities, in the grassland, mountains, and the savanna areas of the western and midwestern United States. Coyotes are most abundant in these places. Each state will have different regulations regarding the number of coyotes that can be hunted daily. On average, each person will hunt about two to three coyotes to ensure the population is maintained. Hunters will travel to these areas by off-road vehicles. 
They often go hunting in groups of a few people. Coyotes are very intelligent. They have very good senses. Should always wear hunting protective gear, similar to the terrain of the area, so that you can hide while hiding. When you spot coyotes, capture them immediately. Hunting skills for this species are required to catch one at a time. Their movement speed is very fast. The failure rate will fall to 75% after hunting. Their carcasses need to be harvested immediately to ensure that the habitat of other species is not affected at all. At night, they often appear in outdoor farm areas. Need to move to these areas around 10 p.m. During this time, Hunters need to prepare and look for places near the farm to hide. They will move and forage around 11 to 4 a.m. Each area, they will appear differently because their moving target may be farther or closer. The temperature will be very cold below zero degrees so you need to address warmly to be able to withstand a cold temperature for a few hours of hunting outdoors. These helmets are equipped with binoculars and heat lamps to observe coyotes from afar. This is very important equipment when hunting coyotes at night. When coyotes appear, observe carefully before shooting to not injure the surrounding livestock. Baby cows are always their main target. Calves have weak resistance and are small in size, will track and attack calves. The mission of these hunters is to protect the calves and hunt these coyotes at night. Depending on the area, on average of each night of hunting, you can catch up to 10 to 30 fish. Wild lizards have become a significant problem in many areas of the United States, attacking cities in a variety of ways. Lizards such as night lizards and the tree lizards are often dangerous by eating fish in parks, schools, and pond areas, reducing water quality and causing damage to aquatic life. Native fish species Wild lizards can also attack cats, especially kittens, causing injuries and even eating them. They prefer to eat the eggs of birds and other animals as well, causing damage to the native animal populations. Additionally, wild lizards may enter supermarkets in search of food, creating food safety concerns. They also damage the poultry industry by eating chicks. Some of the areas that are mostly affected by wild lizards includes California, Florida, and Texas. According to EPA estimates, each year, invasive lizards cause hundreds of millions of dollars in damage to the U.S. economy. Countermeasures includes awareness propaganda, trap and extermination, and the use of biological methods. However, the situation is still complicated and requires cooperation and interdisciplinary efforts to address the threat from wild lizards in the United States. Handshaking is a simple 
but highly effective method of eliminating lizards from a defined area. This is usually done by experienced people, rangers, or environmentalists. Before doing so, the catcher needs to wear thick gloves to protect themselves from lizard bites. They will then gently grasp the back of the lizard's head and pull gently. Rope catching is a variation of the handshake method. Where a rope instead of hands is used, the catcher will prepare a rope about one meters long and tie it into a small nut at the end of the rope. They will then wrap the rope around the lizard and pull gently. This method is also very effective and is used in many areas across the United States. It is important that the practitioner must have the skills and experience to ensure optimal effectiveness. Invasive iguanas populations are causing significant competition for food and native animals. The iguana's habitat not only damages nature but also has consequences for infrastructure and construction works. Their burrowing behavior can damage underground infrastructure and create wildfire areas, causing a great risk to the community safety and the sustainability of the area. The spread of iguanas also carries human health risks. It can be a source of disease-causing bacteria, such as salmonella, exposing people to the risk of infection and related health problems. To deal with invasive iguana populations, American farmers have used methods such as line fishing, shooting with arrows, hunting, and using nets to catch iguanas, which are being deployed mainly in areas of the world. Areas where iguana populations have reached highly invasive levels, including Florida, California, Arizona, Texas, and Hawaii. According to a study by the University of Florida, these measures have achieved some significant achievements. Florida's iguana population dropped from 10 million to 8 million in about five years of control measures. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.